Hi guys! Welcome back to another episode of What the Smut Book Reviews. I'm your host Candace. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. I really appreciate it. If this is your first time here, welcome. Um, you shouldn't be afraid, but really you should. You should probably be just a little, just a little bit afraid. <laughs> Um, if you are a repeat viewer, I really appreciate you sticking with me. Thank you so much for being here. Um, in today's video, we are going to be reviewing the first book that I had on my list for my January to be read list. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, I did finish it. Oh, the angels are singing today. Can you hear them? It's because Candace actually finished something on time. <laughs> so the first book that I had on my January to be read list was uh, Pleasure Unbound by Larissa Ione. This is the first book in her Demonica series, which I read several of these books many, many years ago. So like the first few in the series, I remember reading and I was really into them. And then I kind of just fell off. And I don't, I don't really remember why that happened, but I'm sure it had nothing to do with the books being bad or anything like that. It just life stuff. I don't know. Um, I was not aware that there were this many books in the series now. So when I was reading them, there was like three or four. According to Amazon, which we all know, I don't know how I feel about Amazon. It's either like you take Amazon's word as Bible or sometimes they fuck stuff up. But according to Amazon, there are 18 books in the Demonica series. When I went on and I looked at the list at the first like maybe five or six, I was like, okay, 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 okay. And then it started getting into some other books that said like Lords of Deliverance. And I was like, wait but that has like a different series name on the front of it. So how is it part of this? I'm still figuring that out. If you know the answer to that question, leave it in the comments below and let me know how, did they like transition over to Lords of Deliverance or did, did they, are they like tied in together? Like, I don't know. I don't know. So, so yeah. So anyway, ignore that crunching going on behind me, like, or like over there, because that's just freckles being a dickhead. So yeah. So if you guys know the answer to that question, please leave it in the comments, because I would love to know um, how all of those 18 books tie in together, if they take place in the same time period, in the same place, and like the characters overlap, like that's fine cool. I would love to have a series that has 18 books that I have to like re-dive into. But if Amazon has it fucked up and those are two separate series, please let me know because if I start reading them, like if I start reading the Lords of Deliverance books from where they they start having Lords of Deliverance and, I, and it's part of it and I'll be pissed. Okay, so uh, Pleasure Unbound has 353 pages. You can get it right now for your Kindle or Nook for the price of $5.99. Um, the mass market paperback is $7.99. And you can get this book used on eBay for around $4 with free shipping. Um, obviously, $4, that price will change based upon the condition of the book. So, like, I'm assuming what's listed for $4 is probably considered in good condition. And then if you want, like, very good condition or if you want, like, new condition, then obviously that price may go up a little bit. But a lot of the sellers who sell these books are selling them with free shipping, so you don't have to pay for shipping, which is always good. Um, I will read you guys the blurb for this book and then we can break it down a little bit and I'll give you my rating and then you'll be free of me for today. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so the, I did read the blurb. I think it was, may have been the same blurb, um, or synopsis. I say blurb. Is that weird? Synopsis. Does it matter? Is it the same thing? It's the same thing, isn't it? Um, I think I read this one during my January to be read list video, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna read it again. I, I was gonna read it again regardless. So <laughs> um, so 
Uh, the blurb for this one says, in a place where ecstasy can cost you your life, dot, dot, dot. She's a demon slayer who hungers for sensual pleasure, but fears it will always be denied her. Until Taylor Mancuso lands in a hospital run by demons in disguise, and the head doctor Eidolon makes her body burn with unslakable desire. But to prove her ultimate loyalty to her peers, she must betray the surgeon who saved her life. And then it, there's like another little bit where it's like that dot, dot, dot thing where it says two lovers will dare to risk, a, to risk it all. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, Eidolon cannot resist this fiery, dangerous woman who fills him with both rage and passion. Not only is she his avowed enemy, but she could very well be the hunter who has been preying upon his people. Torn between his need for the truth and his quest to find his perfect mate before a horrific transformation claims him forever, Eidolon will dare the unthinkable and let Taylor possess him, body and soul. Oh. Okay, so as you can clearly see, this is not contemporary romance. This is in the realm of paranormal romance. The series as a whole, I think, centers around um, a demon-run hospital. Uh, it's called UG, or Underworld General, um, and where Eidolon the main male character is uh, like the head surgeon for the hospital. Um, he does have two brothers, uh, Shade and Wraith, uh, who are like like half siblings. They're all like half siblings. They all have the same sire or like father. And then they had different mothers. Eidolon's father was a seminist demon. And uh, then they each had mothers of a different species. Like for example, Wraith's mother was a vampire. So uh, he's like half and half and he's a tortured soul himself. And like, I can't wait to get to his book because yeah. Um, but Eidolon is the main male character and he is a surgeon at Underworld General. Um, Taylor is the female character, the main female character. And she is a member of like this secret society of uh, slayers called the Aegis. Um, the Aegis is essentially like if you're familiar with like J.R. Ward's Black Dagger Brotherhood series, then you'll know kind of it's kind of along those same lines. It's like you have like the um, underworld type uh, paranormal scene versus this elite group of slayers who have like a, a skewed misconception of what demons are or like what they stand for. Like they, they're basically classifying them all as being like evil, monstrous, mindless, blood sucking fiends type. Do you know what I'm saying? Like just murderous. There's no black, it's like black and white. There's no gray area for the ages. It's all demons are evil. All demons need to be put down. We eradicate, we don't ask questions. We don't whatever, right? Okay, so in the underworld, behind the scenes, there's this thing going on. Um, and I say underworld, it, it, just because underworld general, it's not really the underworld like you would think of like hell or like, you know, it's, it's like low key. <laughs> uh, there is this uh, secret ring of people unknown or things creatures unknown who are um killing supernatural creatures and harvesting their body parts for like an underworld black market type situation so um as the head surgeon for underworld general eidolon is keenly aware that uh there are people creatures or or whatever beasties coming into his hospital that he's trying to treat and trying to save who have either had like their livers extracted or they've had whatever and then left for dead or have been killed and there's something going on right there's something going on so um Taylor essentially gets into a scuffle with some uh underworld beings and she gets left behind and is brought in to underworld general to be treated uh she's treated by eidolon he saves her life and uh in so doing he forms like an attachment to her and 
she comes out of it with basically the knowledge of there is a whole underground society of demons who are free thinking and not just mindless bloodlust type beings and have I been lied to my whole life? Like what's up with that, right? Um, but she is still loyal to the Aegis and to her people, especially to the two head members of the Aegis, the, what they call the Regents. They're um, like heads of the sect that, that where they live, like in New York or whatever. And that is a married couple, uh, Lori and Kynan. And she's very super loyal to them. And she still thinks that like her organization is overall good. She doesn't know if they have a hand in that black market stuff, but she wants to find out. But at the same time, she has to tell them like, yo, there's a hospital where, you know, there's all these demons. Like I found this place, right? So she does to when they, Eidolon eventually like releases her, not after, like not before he like, has like a little sexual inter interlude with her and whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she goes back and she tells them about the, the hospital and they're like, oh, we're gonna give you this tracking device. We want you to basically um, get injured again. It's gonna be like a stage scene type injury. We're gonna, we want you to get injured again, get taken back to the hospital. And then we're gonna give you this cell phone. And when it open, all you have to do is open it like it's a, it's like one of those flip phones, those old joints. Um, when you open it, it's going to immediately send out like a beacon thing that everyone inside the hospital, it will like attach itself, like a air dispersed type tracker system that will attach itself to all the beings in the hospital. And then when they leave the hospital, even though the hospital is like itself hidden, they'll be able to pinpoint a central location based on where these people surface and like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like all points of a star go to the center. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Um, she's like, I don't really feel comfortable doing this. I don't really want to do this because I have now started to question that maybe, you know, these demons are not bad, but I, I, I'll, 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 I'll go along with the plan for now. So uh, she does that. And she goes to the hospital and Eidolon's there and he's treating her. And during this whole time, like he's been pining for her and she's been pining for him. And they're like secretly like into each other. And that's another thing about Taylor that you have to understand. Taylor has like a lot of pent up sexual frustration when it comes to the male species. So Taylor experienced something when she was younger where she saw her mother being um, basically raped and tortured by a grotesquely looking demon. Um, and because of that, it, co it comes out later that because of, because of stemming from that, uh, that encounter, she can't have an orgasm during sex. Like she, she can get herself off, but no man has ever been able to get her off. So it comes out later when she's with Eidolon that that's the reason it's like a psychological thing. And then when she flips that switch, like she goes off like a rocket, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, so, so no spoilers, but spoilers. Um, so it turns out that uh, yeah, so Taylor's sexual frustration, uh, is tied to like a subconscious, um, thing, like a hang up, a subconscious hang up because of what she witnessed with her mom. Um, it also comes out later that the demon who, uh, was going at her mom is her father. <laughs> And she is half demon. She comes to this realization. Eidolon knows right away that there's something up with her, that she's not entirely human. Um, she doesn't figure it out until about halfway through the book. And then she's torn between trusting in her, her ageist people and thinking that they will accept her, even though she's half demon. And like secretly knowing that they're going to try and kill her once she reveals that she's half demon. So... Um, she's, a, she's got like this internal struggle going on. She doesn't want to admit the truth to herself for a long time. And then finally, when she does accept it, she 
reveals that truth to the male leader, Kynan, who um, basically knows nothing about what's going on with the, uh, the black market organ sales and stuff, but they suspect that um, some members of the Aegis are involved along with some me members of the demonarchy. So um, he goes back to investigate to see what he can find out. And he's like, you're definitely out of the, I'm not going to kill you, but you're definitely out of the Aegis. You're, you're no longer going to be able to be a slayer. I don't want anything else to do with you. Meanwhile, um, there are subsequent characters like in, like in the background that like have, you know, they're like side characters who are like, for example, Eidolon's two brothers. Um, then there is a, a female doctor named Jim who knows Kynan, but who is also secretly a demon. Um, and she's like been pining for him and she loves him and everything and but he's married and she can't you know um so yeah so he goes back and he's like um i gotta find out what's going on he goes and he suspects that they're going to he suspects that there's that that at least some of them are involved in this underground ring of body part smugglers and it all comes out in like this big, massive, like blow up, like a group fight type situation where you've got like bad guys and good guys and, and, and not so like kind of straddling the line guys and they're like all going at it and there's a coup and there's like, okay. I remember why I got so into this series when I read it the first time many, many years ago. I love this author. I love the way she writes. There is a good deal of um, sexual type stuff, obviously, because you know that's what we're here for really is the schmutt. Um, but there's also like intrigue and suspense and whatever and whatever and, and humor, which I really appreciate. I like a book, like for example, Cressley Cole's IAD series is chock full of not only great plot and relatable characters or great characters, but they're funny. Like there's consistently like jokes being thrown around and banter between the characters and that kind of thing. And I love that. I, I love it. Books that like take themselves too seriously, I have a harder time getting into. It's just me. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who like really like a, a book that's all about that plot. And I'm just like, cool. But for me, I want my people to be funny too. And then I also want them to have like sexual chemistry. And then I also want, the, it's like a long list of demands that you must meet in order to, <laughs> in order to make it in my book. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Am I picky? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but I really, really loved this book. I can't wait to get into the next one. But I'm like vacillating between like, <laughs> can I just go straight into the next book? And then, but then I'll be reviewing like back to back Larissa Ion books on my channel or do I have to read somebody else to pepper in variety like I it's like a, it's like an internal struggle for me um because I really want to just like jump into the next book read it whatever but I've already plotted out my January to be read list and I can't deviate from that because I've already like stuck my foot in it and put on YouTube that I'm going to read these books so it is what it is I'll finish my January to be read list and then I'll read back to back Larissa Ion books. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. Um, but yeah, for the rating for this book, I gave it a solid nine. I really, really enjoyed it. I really like Larissa's writing style. It flows really well. It has good plot lines. Like it's, it's got a good story. The characters are relatable. The, um, sex slash love scenes are yeah they're they're good they're they're well done <laughs> um 
And yeah, I can't remember if uh, Shade's book is next or if Wraith's book is next, but I want to say one of the two brothers has a book soon, like within the beginning of the series, like either book two or book three. I can't remember, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you, boy. Um, so yeah, that's my rating for the book. Um, I would highly recommend that if you guys are into paranormal romance, if you guys are into um, like a smattering of humor uh, mixed in with your your sexy times, um, yeah, you can't. I don't think you could go wrong with this series. I would I would definitely recommend it to anyone. Um, if you like me and you like my channel, if you find me ridiculous but in a good way please consider subscribing insert thirsty emoji here um and yeah if you do subscribe please hit that uh, little bell so that you get notifications when i upload a new video i usually upload videos on thursdays I usually upload videos on Thursdays around like 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, sometimes I get lazy and it might go up on Friday, <laughs> but usually it's Thursday. Um, so keep a lookout for that or hit the bell so that you get those notifications. If you would like to follow me on social media, you can do that. I do have a members only Facebook group devoted to this channel and an Instagram and a Twitter account. I'll link them all in the description box below and I'll put a little banner here for you guys to see um and yeah i think that's uh that's about it i don't think i'm pretty much done with that <sighs> tea um i love you guys so much and i will see you in my next video and i thank you so much for watching and sticking with me and not clicking off if you're watching this and you haven't clicked off if you did click off, you're not actually watching this. So you won't hear me say that you really wounded me by clicking off. Okay. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Hello, my loves. I'm back with another video. Got my papers together. Push that away because my laptop is fucking useless to me today. Mm, so the first book that I had on my January to be read list for um, January. <laughs> fucking idiot. I can't. I can't. What in the hell are you even doing? He's literally just turning his house, like using his teeth to try and turn his house upside down. But then when he gets it upside down, he uses it to flip it back over. Like, what are you trying to accomplish right now? It's like one of those edible, those little edible hut things, but still, do you need to do that right now? Like you weren't trying to do that before I came in here to record, so. I hate you. No, no, I don't, I don't really. But right now, I'm annoyed. Okay, okay. No, I'm not doing this shit. I'm not doing this shit. Move, move it. Skadoosh, skadoosh. Skadoosh it. Come on. This way. This way. This way. Come on. Come on. Skadooch. Skadooch. Give me this. You can have it back when I'm done. Because I don't have fucking patience for that shit. Eat some of your regular food. Oh, God. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Where the hell was I? 
forgot. I have forgotten where I was. Most likely the ones that are like $4 are probably only listed in like good condition. And then if you want something that's like, like new condition or, oh my God, are you kidding me? Have I been doing, have I been talking the whole time without my teeth? Oh my God. Um, let me redo everything that I just said because uh, if I said it with lipstick on my teeth, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be hot. Um, <laughs> I'm in the camera, mommy. Yes, I know you're in the camera. <laughs> mommy, I don't want that. I want mac and cheese cup. You want mac and cheese cup? Yes. We don't have any cup. We only have cans. I guess can. I want mac and cheese can. Okay, give me five minutes. No. Lipstick on my teeth. Okay, so where where was I? I don't remember. Fuck, where was I? What was I talking about? Um. Da -da 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 -da. Doing it and doing it and doing it. Wow, doing it and doing it. I don't know why that fucking song is stuck in my head. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know the words to that song. And stuck in my head. I haven't heard it in 400 years and it's stuck in my head. Um, this rabbit is literally going to be the death of me. Literally. Like I can't, I can't take it. He's driving me nuts. Now that I'm at the end of the video and I'm not actively trying to explain something, he's laying down. He's gonna fucking take a nap now. He's gonna take a nap. He's not making a peep, you hear? Not a fucking peep. But throughout the whole time I was recording. <sighs> you know what you've done. I actually did have the book in paperback form that I probably should have like held up at some point during the video, but I didn't. I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. Remote's still broken, so I've got to manually 